Hello everyone, it's Chris here. Today I'm making a video tutorial on how to clean the Spectrum linear servos that are commonly used in the Blade Ultramicro helicopters. Uh, helicopters such as the Nano CPX, the Blade MCPX, and the MCPX Brushless Ultramicro helis. Over time these servos do get dirty and it affects the flight performance of the models and you gotta clean them. You can service them, it's a lot more inexpensive to just clean them up than it is to just buy a whole new servo. And so a lot, I found out a lot of people do do this and it seriously could save a lot of money. For the price you pay for just one of these servos you could just buy the cleaning supplies that'll pay for itself over and over and over again. I have a, a Blade Nano CPX that needs some maintenance and the swash plate isn't leveling out correctly because of dirty servos. Now for cleaning supplies uh, you can use a vast array of things. I'll tell you what's good to use and what's really bad to use. Uh, you, you can go from uh, really really cheap uh, use a pink eraser. Uh, you can take uh, it another step up a cotton ball or a cotton swab and some rubbing alcohol. The best thing I like to use is motor cleaner spray. Uh, this is Power Shot from Duratrax. Um, I'm not trying to advertise any particular brand. There are many out there and uh, they're all pretty much good. They're, you know, the top of the line and since this is an electric part, it's a very ideal thing to use. But you can, you know, take a shortcut. If you've got a rubber eraser, a little pink guy like this, uh, it's uh, much more inexpensive than that can of uh, motor spray cleaner. Now, what you don't want to use is one of those white erasers. It's much more abrasive. It's got uh, very fine uh, pieces of metallic or, or sand or, or it's much more granular uh, than this kind of eraser. This one's nice and soft and it won't damage the contacts on the servo itself. So let's run through this, okay? On the back face of the linear servos, there are four screws. I'm going to try to point out right here. Hopefully this can zoom in. Good enough. You will see four screws. They're captured by circles. And there's some four white circles with four very small screws. Now, keep in mind to take very good care of taking this thing apart, taking the screws out, because they're very tiny, and as far as I know, you cannot buy replacement screws for this. You can only pray to have a, you know, a, a, an old servo where you can salvage any existing screws. So, what I used to do when I wasn't so good at this and uh, wasn't wise enough to get a magnetic screwdriver tip was to use uh, a bandana, a cheesecloth, even a, a bowl. Uh, bowls aren't very good or very ergonomic to be unscrewing parts. So I opted for the uh, previous two things because I could lay it down flat and if the screw got away from me it was more likely than not that I would just fall and rest on top of the bandana or the cheesecloth or a napkin, something soft, something that will absorb uh, shock if you will. So we're taking apart the back circuit board off the linear servo. Inside 
the guts of this thing, which are really, really simple. It works the, very much the same way as a jack screw does if you're a electromechanical geek like I am. You'll know that jack screws are the backbone design off these linear servos. Use a screw and a contact rail. Jack screws also use springs. This thing did has a spring on the uh, locked up on the up portion where the shaft bearing is on the screw itself. Yeah, pretty much works the same way though. So sometimes these screws uh, won't help themselves out all the way, so you just use some um, needle nose tweezers to just remove anything. You don't want to lose these screws. Remember, they can't be replaced. I, I cannot find any replacements. Okay, now carefully peel back and observe these two wires. There's a red and blue wire, and that's the power wires for the, the motor on the servo. You don't want to uh, separate that, but you do want to separate the jack screw just so to speak. I know it's not really a jack screw technically, but it works the same way in mechanics from the circuit board. Now you notice, uh, yeah, it's a little dirty. It needs some cleaning. There are two contact rails. There's a silver one and a black one to the right of the silver one. These are the points of interest that you, also, uh, you need to clean. Also, there's a contact track right here that could get dirty. Now, this is very delicate. If you do clean it, you want to use a circular motion downward like this. There's a middle finger that it can't quite be shown in this video because I'm just using my smartphone as a camera. But there's a small middle finger right on this contact track that if you go backwards and up, you'll catch the uh, that contact point right there. And you can easily bend it and warp it out of place. We don't want to do that when we clean it. So now that we got it apart, uh, we can use our cleaning tools get those tracks, contact uh, rails nice and clean, get the contact track nice and clean as well. Okay, uh, I just use a little bit of uh, cotton ball right here, just roll it up in my finger. You can use a cotton swab too, or a Q-tip, it's just dandy and fine. Uh, you can use the rubbing alcohol, or the motor cleaner spray, or we could take a shortcut and real quick, just gently erase the dirt right off that contact rail with the pink eraser. You do not want to do this to the uh, contact track because it's a very delicate part on these linear servos. Now, uh, from what I could see versus what the camera sees right now, it could use just a little bit more cleaning, but that that's good enough right there. Uh, you can put it back together from here on out, or you know, if you have motor cleaner spray or rubbing alcohol, I'd suggest uh, cleaning it just a little bit further. I'm going to use uh, a blast of the motor cleaner spray. I sprayed it right onto the cotton ball piece. Just gently rub that down. This will take uh, any residue from the eraser right off of it. And again, as I said, nice and gently, you want to go downward on this. The contact track right here. When you, when you do do this, you can actually feel that middle finger trying to grab and pick up on the cotton ball. Look at all that dirt. Disgusting, huh? Anyways, once that's done, uh, let any 
rubbing alcohol or motor cleaner spray dry up and then uh, line it back up you'll feel it lock in it, it does have its own track where it, it it mounts properly to the circuit board back here reinstall all four screws back on it and reinstall the servo back onto the model and you should be flying uh, as good as true as as it was once new all over again and uh, he, this is a, as I said a very simple procedure to do um, some people are you know a little too lazy to clean and they'd rather just go ahead and spend fourteen fifteen dollars on a new servo and not even the power shot spray the motor cleaner spray that doesn't even cost that much let alone a pink eraser so you know, uh, the next time your helicopter starts to suffer in its performance uh, during flight and you do find out that your servos are dirty or they're not acting properly, then, you know, this is really something to think about. You just clean it up, take, what was that, less than five minutes to clean or hop online or drive down to your local hobby shop and, and you know, bust open your wallet and... Uh, spend that much money you know the choice is yours uh, so that's what that's all about uh, so again clean servos are uh, happy servos and happy servos make uh, happy flights for people like you and me this is uh, the completion of the tutorial and I hope you guys you know learn something take something from it hey if you've got other tips and tricks uh, let me know uh, or post them yourself I'd love to see them anyways uh, as usual happy flying to you take care guys bye